This week we read chapter six, which was a very <laughs> long chapter. <laughs> it took me a very long time to read. Had lots of good information though. very beginning it talked about how like doing well in school used to mean mastering like content skills and getting good grades but like now that we're in education like we're realizing that it's much more complex or at least we need to realize that it's much more complex yeah. if we haven't already and um in this in middle school academic success and personal development are very very important and they kind of go hand in hand you can't really have one mm -hmm. without the other or you shouldn't says towards the end. Um, yeah. And it also is very, like, corresponding to the age group that we teach. Mm -hmm. And so, like, in elementary school, they're going to be going through different levels of development as middle school and then as high school. And so with being, like, in the middle, middle level, um, we have to be aware of, like, the development that they're going through during that phase. Which in middle school I didn't, I wouldn't have ever really thought of being like, I bet my teachers are concerned about my like personal health and well-being just as much as my education. Like I never would have thought that, and so I think that it. But I always did. I could always tell whenever there was a teacher who was like more invested in us as people as much as they were as us like as students and getting grades. So yeah. Um, yeah. Personal growth and development are like this is something that I like learned. I didn't really think of. I haven't really thought through this. I guess because it hasn't been really like you don't think about your personal development while you're developing. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah. I didn't really realize that personal growth is like positive relationships, self awareness, um, social awareness, self regulation, mm -hmm. decision making. Kind of threw me for a world because like, I'm not very good at decision making. <laughs> but at least I mean I guess at least I know that. At least I use my self awareness. <laughs> to know that I'm not good at decision making. Mm -hmm. um, autonomy, personal responsibility, and like etc. But I never really thought that it was that, like that in depth. I always just thought it was something that was kind of like, oh, cool, like this is something that's happening. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And also, um, like the lack of growth or the growth of one area can affect mm -hmm. the other areas. Mm -hmm. So. And I remember like, <laughs> it does, it, ex it explains, it does. like when you, like I'm reading this book and I'm like, this is why they're the way they are, this I mean, not like so in a bad way, but that's yeah, the yeah. why, that's the reason that they're, it's true, you know, they go through so much. And it's, can you imagine having this kind of knowledge when you were in middle school? <laughs> That'd be weird. That would be weird, just being like, I don't think I'd be open to it. Over self-aware. I'd be like, what are you talking about? I probably would have been. You know how they talk about how you need to put some things just out of reach, but like if it's too out of reach that everybody just gets upset and shuts down? Yeah. Yeah, we would just get upset and shut yeah. down. Like, it's too far out of reach. Like, it's not one of those things that even with tools, you can't get there. Yeah, like, it's just too so hard to understand. Yeah. We would just all be like, all right, there's no need for nope. this. Nope, nope, nope. Um, so... In the move to middle school concept, schools put more focus on students' social and emotional development mm -hmm. than was practiced in elementary schools, which I think was, like, I never really thought of that either. Like, it was just like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, like, that's, that's something new. Like, and then I sat there and thought about it for a while, and I was like, I guess that's true, because, like, you move around more, and, like, they kind of try to get you in different classrooms with different people to try to get you to socialize, mm -hmm. um, I like how at the top of page 93, it was just like, it was, it literally says simple, simply put, it's an awkward season. Mm -hmm. And like, it's just like the transition between like elementary school and then into middle school. And then just like the awkwardness of middle school, because we do literally, like we were just talking about, like we don't understand how we develop and we don't mm -hmm. understand why kids behave the way that they do. And so it's so important, you know, for us as educators to be uh, very aware of that so that we can help students through mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, and right after that, it says it's a season, or it's a time of constant changes, mm -hmm. sh social shakeups, swinging emotions, and intense pressures, which I just saw in my field. You guys are juniors, so you aren't in this field right now, but the field that goes with fundamentals and planning. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in a field, and there were students who, um, like, there's a big thing going on between cheerleaders right now, and then there was also, <laughs> like, a- What grade are you in? Seven. Okay. 
and then there was a fist fight right before class and oh. both of the kids were in the class that got into the fist fight but even though they just fought as soon as they came into the classroom they both were just talking and joking and smiling at each other so That's like weird just the fact that things can change from mm -hmm. like in 20 minutes like i don't know it just mm -hmm. i <laughs> i saw a lot of that in this in this chapter that we read and i was like mm. very very cool but but very hard to read I yeah think. yeah definitely very hard to read hmm. i'm trying to think of other like really big we talked about the best chances for success, like mm -hmm. to get your students to be successful, and there's like a whole list. Oh, is that on 94? 94, um, 95, yeah. I love lists. Um, I think you got this one. You read it on, okay. So, so is it this? Yes, it is okay. that. Okay, cool beans. And do you want me to read them? You can read some well, of them. Like, the ones that kind of stood out to yeah, me the most was like high one. expectations, they declare this, so like on mm -hmm. the first day of class. Like, mm -hmm. tell them what you're going to expect out of them so for the whole year. Yeah. And, yeah. I really thought the emphasis on goals of learning over goals of good grades was really Yeah, really because big. just because you get grades doesn't, the good grade doesn't mean you learned what yeah, you're no. supposed mm -hmm. to learn. A lot of times you can learn other things just for the test and mm -hmm. get those done. I saw that in my field a lot. Mm -hmm. I did that in school <laughs> I did a that, lot. But I, I do that now. <laughs> <laughs> I do that now. <laughs> collaborative learning experiences like mm -hmm. um it's not called bait and switch when you get two students to like be like turn and talk to your partner about this for like a minute think, mm -hmm. pair, share. yeah think yeah. pair share it's not bait and switch everyone um and then supportive feedback i think that's great and it's avoiding mm -hmm. like good job or like needs clarification like actually give them actually what give they them do. something they can use yeah. i know i think it's a problem for like for like that i've experienced a lot of like in older grades like in especially in like high school and college professors or teachers are just like yeah like work on this and you're just like i'll work on it now and so yeah, yeah so that'll be important the two that caught my eye on 95 were um, multiple opportunities for students to explore and then trusting caring respectful relationships and I think that it's not only talking about, like that's mostly just talking about like the teacher-student relationships, but then also encouraging those relationships between students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that they're not getting into fist fights right before coming to class. Yeah. I like the, um, a couple after that, it said many opportunities for choice. Mm -hmm. And in my field right now, my, my mentor teacher, she has them pick like five questions off of the homework that she grades. So they're like, okay, mm -hmm. let's, you guys get to pick which questions and then all of them are worth one point, and then there's like a daily double, which is worth two points. So like, she does it like that, so they get to choose what questions they go over, and so they avoid going over the questions that nobody got. Mm -hmm. So like, not everybody loses 15 mm -hmm. points or whatever, because um, they don't ask about the ones that are, mm -hmm. that nobody understood, and then she knows the ones that she needs to go over a little bit mm -hmm. more. Which I think is, I think yeah. that's pretty neat because that's giving them choice in what. I'm assuming you're in math. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. <laughs> that gives them a choice in what they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, they mentioned that in autonomy, which is under teaching practices mm -hmm. um, the next few pages, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. yeah. And it said um, give them plenty of chances to take initiative in the classroom procedures mm -hmm. and their own experiences. And don't do it for the students that what they can do for themselves. So if they can do it themselves, you don't need to do it for them. Right. Because they're out of that stage, like that stage mm -hmm. was elementary school, and now in middle school, it's like we don't need to, even though it gets done faster, and maybe if we take initiative and, you know, tell them the answers, or especially when I was in, I was in my field with history, the students did not want to talk at all. Mm -hmm. So it was common for the teacher to, like, step up and, you know, answer the question for them and mm -hmm. do all the work for them, and I don't think they learned yeah. that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they appreciated that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then it's also like a stronger learning. So like it'll stick around longer. Yeah, they they'll want to. I think they need to have that drive to want to learn. Yeah. And then it helps. They talked a lot about, I know in chapter five, they talked a lot about intrinsic and like the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. And so like there's like, you know, students shouldn't be prompted by rewards. You know, they should want to learn. And like the relationship that you have with the students will help them want to learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's hard for them to want to learn if they don't have any kind of mm -hmm. like relationship with you. 
Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, you don't want to... they don't like you that much. Yeah, you don't want to learn from a stranger. Or yeah. someone just yeah. puts you down all the time, you aren't going to want to listen to them. Or if someone yells at you. I mean, think about, like, your favorite yeah. classes that you've had. Like, it's probably not... I mean, content probably had a little bit to do with it, but, like, it really was a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Um... A second ago, you were talking about multiple chances. I forget. Who was that? Was that okay. I think it was me. <laughs> you. Okay, I think so. So, there were multiple, like, the multiple chances. I really like that. And, like, mm -hmm. just because you got something wrong the first time doesn't mean you should just give up because that's your sudden grade. Like, you can do mm -hmm. test corrections or you can do something else and, like, try to make up with points. And later on, it's like, one chance, two chance, three chance, like why would you only give them a certain amount of chances when they when they can really just show oh okay, yeah, it's at the like very end of the yeah, chapter. Um, but it's like learning from one's mistakes, competence building, perseverance, resilience and growth mindset contribute to academic success and personal development. So why give students just one chance to reach such a goal as completing a project and doing well on an assignment, such as writing a paper or passing a test. And I don't know, I really I really enjoy that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I really think that you don't know what's going on in a student's life. And although you should keep those high expectations, like, if they have something going on and they need to redo it, that's, I think you should give them a choice. Yeah. And this book is re reiterating that, so I enjoyed that reading that because it, you don't hear that much like in middle school you mostly hear they aren't gonna let you retake this in high school so what's the point in letting mm -hmm. you do it now yeah. but that's the point where you can have like a teaching experience and be like okay so what did you learn like you can add a question to the retake and be like mm -hmm. what did you learn from having to study <laughs> and do test corrections for this mm -hmm. like and then see some people you can have a growth mindset and be like well, you did this much better on this test. Like, see, you can do it. You just have to put in, like, the work. You can do mm -hmm. it. You have the ability. We all believe in you. Mm -hmm. You just have to mm -hmm. believe in yourself kind of thing. Yeah. Which I really, really enjoy a lot. Mm -hmm. um, there was um, <clears throat> a section that I really liked that, that we, because we started talking about, like, the autonomy, relevance, the challenge, and the clear mm -hmm. expectations, and it kind of went over certain points that were, oh, and then it went on to set other ones but like for these ones there was a couple really good points I know for relevance um, that like these those kind of learning experiences like they also need to be meaningful and so like and they have to like want to learn and so it's a, like connecting learning to pop culture current events situations in the community popular music uh, video games and school issues and stuff and then um, how that kind of learning can be um, a lot more powerful because it's something that they care about. Yeah. I forget which class I was in, but one of my classes we watched, we just recently watched a video about how, I think it was fundamentals and planning, but we watched a video about how um, this teacher hated Jersey Shore, but like that's all his students would talk about. <laughs> so he would relate, he would pick words from the show mm. and relate it back to um, what they were doing in class. Mm. Like he would use their vocab to like try to bring that into it, that's and it cool. got all of his students kind of like excited about mm -hmm. it. Um, so I don't, I, like sometimes we have to do things we don't want to because we are there for mm -hmm. the students, mm -hmm. not for ourselves. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're there ourselves, or we would not be real but, mm -hmm. <laughs> but never mind. we're fine <laughs> never mind so on page 103 for you i don't know yeah, page it would be for ahead. you so um there was this great list well we're running out of time this is such Second a long list. chapter um oh yikes yeah you're right yeah and so um so there's a, a list of the five things that uh, students should have goals for both like belonging and becoming in the classroom and so it was self-awareness self-management social awareness relationship skills and then responsible decision making as a 12 year old in middle school or whatever I would have looked at this list and laughed <laughs> because like like you and sometimes in middle school you're just like literally trying to survive like you do your classes you try to keep your head down the hallway and like and so it's going to be really important for us to help encourage them 
and that's it's called like null curriculum like it's not actually part of the curriculum it's part of like the lifelong learning that we just like try to embed into our lessons and so these things are really important to always keep in the back of our head when we're lesson planning just like thinking about how we can in like little subtle ways continue to encourage this and like a lot of these things will come from the relationship between the teacher and the student which is just really important isn't null what you leave out is the stuff that's like i thought stuff that you had to cut out of your curriculum okay and, and then, then like there's extra thing. there's like extra and what's the what's the word it might be hidden it's hidden. Okay. is it okay. hidden is it the actual word for it um yeah that's like that's what i mean like the stuff that's not actually like explicitly stated in your curriculum but it's like you're like but it's something that it's you're teaching yeah. through different which is really things. important because yeah. in i have no idea where it was in this chapter but in here it talks about how um like the students look up to you mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. they also like look at your body language and like how you're like reacting and how you're saying things so like you have to be on your a game all the time all the time um just to all try to set good examples um and i think one example of that is like when you're in like talking to other teachers or walking down the hallway like just to remain respectful even if something's going wrong between you and another teacher or something just happened in your class and you're super frazzled i don't know mm -hmm. i feel like that'll happen but like oh, sure. you just gotta stay you gotta stay positive and yeah. calm um and then it's talking about student strengths um mm -hmm. i'm talking about this in all of my classes right now so like this is a, it's really important yeah like their strengths and interests like you should be hitting on those mostly mm -hmm. but sometimes you have to push them past their strengths and kind of hit on their weaknesses you can't just focus on strength because why would you okay so if your arms are super strong why would you go to the gym and just work on your arms without working out the rest of your body because mm -hmm. yep. then you're going to be a noodle with arms like like you don't want your students to be image. noodles with arms okay <laughs> You want them to I feel like use you need their to write noodle, that in. but <laughs> no, no noodles, noodles with arms. With arms. In years from now, you're gonna read that. You're gonna, I'm be, gonna like, be like, what? What were we talking about? <laughs> there it is. No noodles with arms. I I love it so much. Yeah, it talks about young adolescents should have a, should have chances to explore everything. Mm -hmm. Well, almost everything. Mm -hmm. As we said earlier, explore. I'm reading from the book. I did okay. Not <laughs> As we said earlier, explore. Exploration should be part of many learning experiences in every classroom and every part of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I liked how it also talked about how like we need to know. I don't know why I did that. Sorry. Why we need, we need to know like what worries them. Like so we know what they're like what they're thinking. So like if something worries them and we can incorporate it into our message, or not our message, our lesson. <laughs> Sorry, pastor. Okay, pastor's coming out. Um, <laughs> But if we can incorporate that into like our lesson, like maybe it'll take away some of the anxiety mm -hmm. that is presented yeah. towards it. Yeah. And then also that's part of the reason why we do have such well-rounded education by the time that we graduate from high school is because like, because a lot of students are going to be like, you know, why do I have to, like, when am I ever going to use pre-calculus in real life? And you're just like, well, it's, it's more than that. It's about like, it's the development of the whole mind and it's mm -hmm. about learning what makes you Problem tick. solving and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's applicational skills to life. And then also, like, you know, I never would have known that I wanted to go into something with English if I hadn't taken so many, like, language arts classes or just, like, things like that. And, like, you know, do you like math a lot? And, like, I do, do not. Like history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like. <laughs> okay. And when um, it talks about developing growth mindset. Which yeah. Is, which and is. And the power of yet, which we yet. learned about in sound design. Mm hmm. Oh, fundamentals? Fundamentals, yeah. Okay, I was like, there we learned about it in foundations. Yeah. I always did those two confused. I was like, I, I did foundations found last year and I don't remember this. Yeah. But, okay. Because fundamentals. Yeah, fundamentals is freshman year. Yeah. 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 I always get them confused. I do too. <laughs> they both start with F, so it's yeah. probably the same thing. And they talked about growth mindset, not just for students, but for teachers yes. as well, which I was like, mm -hmm. what? What? It's like yeah. all teachers need to read this book because yeah. like that's mm -hmm. so, like, I feel like so many teachers go in and they're like, well, I don't expect this from my students. I don't think they can do it. Mm -hmm. They forget the yet. And then they oh also, they also, and it's crazy to think that teachers probably have the same mindset for themselves. So it's like, oh yeah, well I, like my students can't, I can't either. Like mm -hmm. I can't make them learn this. Like, no, like. <laughs> yeah, the, 
things I highlighted in the teacher mindset. I don't know what page it's on for you guys, but the heading is the teacher's mindset. And it says when a teacher has growth mindset, students are more likely to change mindsets and believe they can learn if they work hard and use specific, I can't do it. specific. <laughs> yeah, strategies <laughs> and assistance from others. Mm -hmm. So we, I didn't think that my mindset could really have an impact mm -hmm. on the yeah. students, but it does. Mm -hmm. they, They're yeah. little wizards. Oh my gosh! They are little they, noodles with arm wizards, yes. <laughs> and they will they will look to us about everything. Yeah. They look for our reactions to students misbehaving. They're just like yeah. waiting for a chance to be and like. That's why they do the things they do. Yeah, because they want us to react. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it talked about what was it? When students are like socializing too much, we take away. Oh, what was it? Mm -hmm. We take away <laughs> their socializing time, <coughs> which is like not good like yeah that, like when we that just hurts us more yeah. Lunches, like yeah when you have to be quiet for your whole lunch oh I, hate those. I know that's we ridiculous we did that for a whole year because our what you guys do long. I don't know it wasn't me it, was <laughs> it, it wasn't, wasn't me <laughs> we never did anything oh Jeez. my goodness I know sometimes like during like homeroom or something they'd like be like yeah like no talking yeah I'll be like all right, well, we're out of 20 minutes, so. We are. Yeah, so is there anything else you guys want to summarize for the chapter? Or, I like, the very last point, like, giving the second, the third, and the fourth chances is not something that I originally thought was, like, for me, I'd be like, students, you get one chance to do this over, but, like, it's about forgiveness. And, like, that's all, honestly kind of, like, that's almost like a Christian mindset, too. Just, like, God gives us multiple chances, so we should extend that grace to our students. Mm -hmm. And so it's really, really hard. There's a reason they call it grace, but um, that's kind of how... I like to think of that. Yeah, one of the last things that I'll mention is like, always show students how they can learn from correcting mistakes. Not from making mistakes, but from correcting mm -hmm. mistakes. Mm -hmm. So like, that goes yeah. with your multiple chances. Like, mm -hmm. A, you didn't get a great grade this time, but like if you do test corrections, mm -hmm. I can give you five extra points or like yeah. something like that. And like from fixing your mistakes, mm -hmm. you can learn and then do better the next time. Mm -hmm. Or like, you can, I don't know. I just, I just, I'm very into this chapter because it's very much about grace. And mm -hmm. like, a lot of my very teachers true. weren't about grace. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't know. Just because somebody doesn't get something done on time doesn't mean that they, they didn't try. Or yeah, or they didn't do it right. Like, yeah. sometimes people yeah. just have a lot going on. I wish my professors were that way. Me too. <laughs> some of them. Tell yeah. Me I'm just like, oh, some of them stress me out. And then, like, what's the last thing I say? Um, Something about positive, productive, healthy, a healthy attributes. Yeah, are embedded in both um, personal and af mm -hmm. academic development, mm -hmm. which is a really big stage mm -hmm. in this level of um, of learning. Yes. Yeah. Did you have anything? No. Okay. Well, Thanks for watching, Mrs. Beer. I wonder if she gets bored of uh, watching these like every week. Well. We love you.